All right, so this is the first time I have gotten out my paint palette in maybe a year, a little bit more. Um, I use paint every day, and mostly for work. And since the pandemic hit and the wedding industry no longer existed, I stopped working, I stopped painting, and I'm going to try and face that burnout and see if it's something I still love. I don't know if it is or not, so I don't really know where to start, so I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to clean my palette that is currently covered in dust and cat fur. I'm going to go through all my brushes. Um, I have a whole other set here. And get rid of any that are really damaged or don't use, just to kind of cleanse a little bit. Um, so I'm going to clean out my whole middle, get all this clean. I don't remember what is in any of these wells anymore, so I'm going to give the whole thing a good rinse, get all the cat fur off of it, get everything saturated, and then kind of map out what I have in here and see what needs to be refilled. started this, um, I don't know what to call it, series, over on Instagram, and I talked a little, about, a little bit about why I was doing it, but if you're joining us here, or joining me here, by us I mean the cat, the dog, and I, um, I was a full-time artist in the wedding industry. I own a stationery company called Design House Moira. I have owned my company for 14 years, and last year was faced with some personal happenings that made me realize that I was pretty burnt out. I have not told very many people this, but I decided to close my business last summer in August. Karen and I made that decision together. So we were already planning on closing when the pandemic hit and that was just kind of the nail in the coffin, so to speak. And it was a loss I never really recovered from. I don't know if continue forward with my business. I don't know if it's even something I want to do anymore, but there's not much else to do these days, so I'm going to get back into things a little bit. And I, <laughs> I hear the dog in the background, I call him Moo Dog. Um, I am putting myself in a position by recording these and posting these to paint every day like I used to when things were good. And in that process, I forced myself to face some pretty hard topics like burnout, loss, devastation, identity, 
I'm sure we'll come across a few other ones as I work through some of this stuff. So, first start, right? Starting with a clean palette. I have been using this palette for, I don't know, probably six or seven years now. Um, the paint that you see that doesn't come off is gouache, acrylic gouache, so it no longer reconstitutes and kind of ruined parts of my palette, but I just painted it up and it's not a big deal. I usually don't wash this. I typically will mix colors on here that I use fairly frequently, so I just leave them on the palette. I probably used to clean it once every, like, maybe every year. Uh, but I typically don't don't clean it like this. I am gonna go give the entire thing a good rinse to get rid of some of the the dust and the cat fur. All right, so I gave this a rinse. We are much less dusty and full of cat fur. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is go through my brushes. Kind of clean out which ones I actually use. I have some new ones in here that I picked up today in like the hopes that I would want to use them. And I'm gonna go through some of my old brushes and get rid of them. Um, this is my very trusty painting cup and my pipette. I use the pipette to fill individual wells. Um, I've also used a spray bottle in the past, but I kind of like the pipette because it, it's the same shape and size as my brushes, so it stores evenly. Um, I have a handful of these brushes. These are the Raphael Soft Aqua, which brush-wise I really enjoy, but the way they're wrapped, these metal dudes, um, I find incredibly uncomfortable. I've always meant to snip those off and I just never did. But they can stay. I have these guys for like bigger projects that I don't actually need out of my palette, so I'm gonna put that one away. This is a super important brush. This is the one I use for mixing ink. And it's pretty stiff. It's really important. Um, I used to use angled brushes a lot. I guess at this point I should just... Oh, Monday girl. <laughs> For those who don't know, I have a Newfoundland. And when she stretches, she moves like a cow. Um, I don't usually use these little guys. I'm going to pull these out. Um, how I kind of like to have my brushes arranged is that I have my backup set, which lives in this holder here. All the ones I don't use very often, but still would like to have on hand. And I always have a paper towel by my painting set that has all the brushes that I use frequently on it. This is a new paper towel for anybody who has followed me for any length of time. You know my paper towel is usually covered in paint. I'm gonna get rid of my angled guy. Alright, so I did get some new ones. Um, there's a few brands that I use uh, Princeton and the Scepter Gold. I use pretty religiously. I've got a few other handfuls in here that I've just picked up along the way or whatnot, but those are the ones I typically use. Um, I do have a few sables, and I'm actually not sure where these came from. These are obviously for Chinese calligraphy, but I'm going to see if I can use them for anything else since I obviously do not know that type of calligraphy. These are covered in cat fur. I think I've had this brush since high school. It's really old and gross and cheap, I'm sure, but I like the oval shape. 
this is going to be my first set that I'm going to start working with. I'm going to go through my old set, these guys here, and pull out any that I don't really use or just too fried. Um, this guy here I've used to mix ink a few times because I lost my ink one for a while. He's going to get tossed. Um, this is a sable. I'm going to pull that one out. That guy can get tossed. Um, I've got a few that I use for texture stuff, like this guy here. I'm going to pull out a few that are just either covered in glue or... Metal straw. Every once in a while, I like to have a straw around. This is what happens when you let paint dry on your brushes. It destroys them. Those are brushes for the day. I'm gonna put these guys in the holder. And then we're gonna start looking at that pink palette and see what exactly we've got going on in there. I generally try and arrange these by size. So my small ones are down at the end. I can't meet Dinah. She's me. Dinah loves brushes. Can you please stop? Come here, sweetie. Probably with a new stand. This one I'm not going to too often. Paper wise, I'm not using anything exciting. This is Strathmore Cold Press. I'm going to pull my sable because it's pretty. I'm gonna have to convince myself to do this at this point. We're just gonna start at the top of the box and uh, start figuring out what we've got in here. I've worked with most of these colors that at this point when I see them on the paper, I know what they are. Some of them have more than one color in each well. So those are gonna be the more difficult ones to figure out. Apologize for my disgustingly stuffy nose. <laughs> Part of what made this year so difficult was that I got COVID back in February, March, and never really fully recovered from it. 
the doctors call it complications from COVID or long COVID. So I've had some pretty nasty side effects from that. Um, this was one of the wells that I have two colors in here. two colors in this corner well as well. I've got a gray and a brown, which really shouldn't be in the same well together, but whatever. It's my favorite brown, transparent brown. I'm pretty sure those last three greens are all the exact same color. Mm, French ultramarine. Beautiful blue. I have two French ultramarines, two different brands, and they kind of behave differently. These two are both French ultramarine. But I really enjoy both of them, so they both get a spot in the palette. Got an indigo and a Prussian, which have kind of merged together. I think those are one of the ones I'm gonna have to clean out and repour. Those are definitely two different shades and they should, I think at some point I accidentally added either the indigo or the Prussian to the wrong well. <laughs> Alright, so there we have it. I'm going to go through and pull some of my tubes, refill some of these guys up, and we're going to start painting. I guess we're going to start with some really basics, like some shapes and some lines, because I don't remember how to paint anything anymore. Oh, actually, before we go, let's do this guy too. This is from Letter Sparrow. Those are the only ones that are clean, because... I have a case on them, but she has some really beautiful colors. Red sienna, yellow ochre, emerald green. Her green is really stunning. And then we've got a few metallics from her as well. I'm just going to get these guys a little wet here. Got a copper, which I think she calls bronze, gold, and a pearl. And then a sky blue, Maya blue, and a Maya violet.
Alright, we'll see you guys tomorrow.